Okay, if you also pick up another front loading washing machine, this thing has a drum drive problem there. The uh, coupling's come undone. Broken like coupling on that one. I'll try and fix it. It's not even a very old washing machine. It's a Korean made Daewoo, so it's a, not a Chinese or a cheaper version of that brand. You get a lot of that um, the big brands now. You pay the price for a product being made in Korea by the actual company that's Korean, but you, get, you think you're buying that actual brand, but the price is still the same as a, the genuine Korean made product, but they don't know how to find out it's made in China or Indonesia, and you pay that same expensive price, you might as well buy a genuine Korean made branded product. That's that company from Korea. Same goes with um, uh, the, the Japanese brands as well. They just, that's all the big rip off now. You get scammed, basically. If you buy a product that's from that particular country and you pay that, ex that, that ridiculously inflated price because of the labour cost of that particular country, and they find a product made in China where the labour is basically free, but you're still paying that expensive price for that brand anyway. So, what's the point? It's just they're scam artists. They're just ripping us off. So, that's. Uh, they're like some particular eBay sellers, in particular from China. They're bloody scum. A lot of the big uh, electronics giant retailers are doing this as well. It's just the idiots ruin everything. As you can see, ugh. I take the front of this washing machine apart, take it all apart. I see, I see if I can fix it with something somehow, so it's strong enough to hold up. It doesn't otherwise work completely fine, this washing machine. It's got no leaks at all. This has this drum drive problem. I said they got about a year of use out of it. Uh, yeah, about a year or so of use out of this thing, constant 24 7 use. It burned really good, and then, yeah, the drum coupling came off. So, um,. I think I know how and why that happened. They probably use a high oxidation, um, a lot of bleach or uh, like Nappy said, oxid uh, oxy action or something that has a lot of oxi uh, oxidizer in it to clean the clothes. That's not good for aluminium, especially if this machine's got an aluminium uh, spider, what they call the spider coupling. Dry coupling that goes in the pulley of the drum. A lot of these are um, just a piece of aluminium that holds the drum to the pulley on the back. Well, that's just going to corrode in no time when I mean, you've got a lot of uh, oxygen rich or potentially corrosive detergents. Which is something this uh, old Bosch doesn't have. It's all stainless all throughout. All stainless all throughout between here and the actual drum that couples to this pulley. It's all stainless steel. You only get that Vasco and Miele um, front loaders these days. Everything else is just crap. Pretty well made uh, machine. That's no, just something on the capacitor hasn't got, hasn't failed. Let's um, right, take all this all out completely and take this all apart, and we'll have an analysis of that failure. It's only really a fun one. This one, not too hard. Though. You just slide the front slides off and screws off, and I can be able to able to um. You yeah, get this all out and lay it on its back and just take this all apart. Maybe I could fix it, maybe. It's a lot of work involved though. Get to that normally to fix this thing, it's a lot of labour involved. <laughs> That's why it's not worth it. Just get a hold of the machine. Little dip there, it's hit there. It's hit there, so something in here is broken. Yeah, I know how it failed. But let's take it apart anyway. Maybe I could red the engineer something to um, fix it. Then put it all back together, just so I could throw a brick in it. <laughs> if you also, Aussie Fifth is to the subject on this. You can see why I don't use oxygen rich, um, uh, edible, anything sort of detergent that's oxygen based. That's just destroyed the aluminium, like termites to cheap ass wood. Look at that. Bloody hell, that's just like termites eating aluminium. Holy crap. This is why I hate front motors, you just can't, there's that last. That's just destroyed all that.
Got some good ears out of this, say. Look at that motor. Doesn't even have any aluminium shell holding it together. It's all plastic. That's still going to be a good for a project, eh? Plastic, fantastic plastic. Yeah, that's a bit much to repair, I think. Here we go, this off, machine something on a lathe to go over that. That has some um, steel rods to go out of here, here, here and here. Roll it and thread the insides of those rods so they can screw in here. And it'd be nice, just so I can throw a brick in it and do it again and again and again. It's a lot of work, a lot of work to do that. As soon as you can get these things by a million, so. This is what it has been on its way out, and it span and it failed, and it span gone off off balance and snapped off as it was spinning. Jesus, I found a date code. This thing was made in 2010. Now the owner said it was two years ago this happened, so they were eight years out of it, which is just yeah. The must have just used the uh, oxygen rich stone and moving powders 24/7. That's just destroyed all that. Not recommended by the manufacturer. And they do that for a reason. Jeez, that's just destroyed it. Just as I suspected, very common fault with these um, aluminium couplings. You don't use too much bleach or anything that oxidizes. Use a commercial um, something like that with all stainless steel construction, like an ASCO or a um, Miller for something they sort of detergents. But these other wash machines like this, the only goes off for that cheap bath detergent that doesn't actually remove stains. So yeah, this is why I hate front loaders for that reason. They're just too cheap they're made. Always stick to a good top loader. Or if you must and you must must get a front loader and you like the front loader set of wash clothes better, then yeah, get an ASCO. Personally if I had to buy a front loader, I'd always buy an ASCO. Everything else is just chuck. Yeah, even to actually do this, if I was fixing this for a customer, that would cost a bit of labour just to replace that bit there. They get another job for another machine. This took me about 20 minutes to do this. It's a lot of labour involved. It's just not worth it for um for even the Chinese machine. This is a Korean-made machine, even. It's still a good machine, but definitely not worth it for a Chinese machine, which they all are Chinese-made nowadays. So, that's a... Uh, Continue rescuing the goodies. I'll uh, just crush it up. Now it'll all fit in the normal recycling bin, all this stuff. This metal is easily broken down to fit in the recycling bin. I might even keep the shell and put a top, a wooden top and a wooden bottom, and just put a blanking plate in the back and put like a wooden feet on the back of it and make like a, a, a bin that I put firewood in. Heh, that might be an idea. Anyway. That'll be enough for now. Thanks for watching. Door follow up. Yeah, you can see that there. Look at that, that's bad. Nice bit of machining work on that. Might be able to separate the aluminium part and do something with this. Who knows? Kept the, kept the pulley as well. But you can see I've got 90 cents. It's oxidised the bloody nickel and tarnished it so bad. They look like copper coins now. Bloody hell. Down the steel part that was holding the heating element in place inside the drum, it's actually uh, uh, corroded to stainless steel. That's actually some pretty bad oxidation there. The other bit's okay. Just gotta get it out. Bloody hell. What about the menu in here? It's just destroyed everything. Most of it's all that powder, which is just corroded drum coupling. I've got some, a lot of goodies out of here though. All Korean components, which is good. No Chinese components, which a lot of wash machine, machines now have. Got um, uh, a good filter, uh, filter board, I might want to apply on that. Pop it on the app on this inverter and use it and then I'll analyse it with an oscilloscope. Again, we'll see how much noise this can actually take out. If you've got a crappy sort of inverter or UPS or something, this is good something to have the just to clean up the output voltage, the signal coming out of it a little bit. How do I have? That's basically what this is, just a, a noise filter. Uh, switch, uh, pneumatic switch. 
put an adjuster on it. Very handy to have. And a, um, a fish tank aerator <coughs> bubble pump made by Han Yu Electrical Car Limited. It's all Korean. So there's the 10. That's pretty cool. It would come in quite handy. So uh, a bubbler for a fish tank, but this must have been used to bubble up the soap or something in the bottom of that drum. That's kind of a handy little uh, component to have. Not a goodie there. More goodies on that circuit. Boy, the pump's good. Good spare hoses. Kept the wiring all intact. I've got the uh, the motor's also um, Han Yu, the Korean motor. Surprising. And it's got a wire all up there. Field warnings, tore those are brushes, and these go, some of these go in series for the, so basically the, the field warnings and the brushes all go in series. I just kind of worked it out with all these wires here. These thinner wires go to the um, odometer or the taco on the back of the motor there. I might even run these toward an oscilloscope to run this motor. I'll run these toward an oscilloscope to see what, what sort of um, device that is. If I can get a signal off there to pick up the motors up again and run myself a variac, that'll be a little uh, future video there. These two thinner wires, I'm going to find what they do yet. I may not need those. There's two thin black wires going here somewhere, but I don't think I need them. The brushes are pretty connected to the plastic. Yeah, the plastic housing has, has an electrical connection here for the brushes. It's pretty interesting how this motor is designed. We've got a yellow wire and a grey wire for the brush. That's pretty easy. I can plug those to a little battery and this should turn. The put power straight to the brushes via a battery. Low voltage would be enough to make it turn. Green and the yellow wire here. Might try that. Let's try that. We'll have to an SLA battery. Try it with an SLA battery. The battery's too flat. I can't do anything with that. It did slightly turn though. Had to help turn it by hand. The Vannon battery to the rescue. Let's see if this Vannon battery is that's a 50% charged will help turn it. Ooh, I uh, set the camera down. I'm after I said start this thing. The motor might need to keep the start. No. Needs more of a kick to start. Could be a need higher voltage too. Let's get back to that bunker, sort of break anyway. I'll do it be safest with an SLA. Power, this battery's better. Yeah, it got a turtle, I think. Because I'm putting power straight to the brushes, there's no field. I have to help start this motor up, but it will turn, just not fast. Yeah, that's easy to turn. It wants to turn. It's coasting along fast, so it can't turn much. Yeah. It's a higher voltage. It's a high voltage. 80, 80 volt one. That explains it. It did turn though. I was, that was easily turned that way and it coasted for a bit and stopped. It's just because it's not a high enough voltage. It's pulling so much current. It's a 240 volt motor. And that particular warning in the middle is 80 volts. Anyway, so there's those two, and they're going to go in series. I'm going to jump with the uh, them in series with the two uh, um, field warnings. So I can just plug live and neutral to those other two remaining wires to complete the circuit for 240 volts, and that motor will run. Anyway, that'll be enough for now. Thanks for watching.